Yeah. All right, hello, and oh, welcome to go. Last Bell Boxing. We've got a very special edition today. We've got a very mm -hmm. special guest. We've got Wayne Mad Dog Elcock, former world champion, IBF uh, challenger, and British champion. How are you doing today, Wayne? You all right? Hello, Wayne. I'm good, thanks. Yeah, yeah, So, when just for the catch up and, and obviously, you know, turn about talk about your career, you've had a terrific career. I mean, you fought the likes of uh, Matthew Matlin, Arthur Abraham, uh, Anthony Farnell. I mean, what a career that you've yeah. had. Yeah, how did you first get into boxing, Wayne? Yeah, I can be proud of it. Uh, literally, it was brought by say by chance. I was a bit of a scrapper. I was always fighting when I was at school. Yeah. Literally, uh, looked up and one of the kids there was a little bit older than me. Box for a local club. Literally, uh, asked me to come down the gym. He said, "You might be tough on the playground, Al Cop, but come down the gym and I'll show you what it's all about." And, and he did. Yeah. To be fair, he gave me a bit of a tonking. Uh, you go one way or the other, really. You're either going to walk away from the sport or uh, or, or you stick with it. They done me in. To be fair, I'm not used to to losing. I hate losing. I'm a I'm a sore loser. So. Uh, I decided to, to get me knuckled down, really, learn a bit more about the sport, become a bit of an historian for all the old fighters. You know, back in the day, Sugar Ray Robinsons, all the guys from back in the day, and trying to then make my own little style up, really, in some respect. Uh, my mm -hmm. first coach wasn't really that technical. It's a lot more technical today than boxing, but he wasn't really technical. It was like, if you can fight, you can fight. So, you know, it was like, you know, it was. I'd come back after, yeah. the, after, after, after the first round and he'd sort of say, just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> Yeah. Really much, much instructions as such, but uh, he knew how to get me going. He knew how to, that's kind of how it all started for me. Uh, I was saying the first year in the sport, I was the England champion and I was in the semi finals of the amateur uh, junior championships. So I had a, a broad art to it and never really looked back from there, really. And then, um, did, you, did you move about uh, amateur gym? So, did you just I know you said your training there wasn't too technical? Did you move on to somebody else, or were you always in the same amateur gym before you kind of? Yeah, she kind of been for. No, I never. I think when I was about, uh, I'd, I'd about nineteen. I think I'd lost two at the time. I moved to a uh, to small like, amateur boxing club, which is now Pat Benson's. But that was a very uh, prestigious club back in the day. They'd got ABA champion after ABA champion, England's Ramsey, Mark Ramsey, Rowan Williams, guys who boxed in the Olympics. I remember seeing them and going, wow, you know, they were coming in the England tracksuits and stuff. And uh, kind of we went there. My dad took me there to sort of like, you know, that's, if I'm being honest, that's where I learned to box. I actually opened the, the Pat Benson Academy, even though I wasn't one of their, their local boys, if you like. I actually opened that for them when they had the new place. Uh, I owe Pat Benson so much for learning me what the jab was all about and learning me mm -hmm. how to box in some respect. A lot of the time I was getting there, I'd be a gut determination and I could bang a little bit. So uh, yeah. that yeah. helped me a lot. But he, he kind of slowed you know, down. He your jab and he, he learned me how to box and yeah, just kept progressing from there really. So I was there for, and for a while. Was that where you got the fundamentals uh, to take on to your pro career? Because obviously you can see that from the fights that you've had. Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, you know, I remember, I remember the first fight I had for Pat and uh, we were boxing a kid and literally uh, he'd said, remember the jab, Wayne, been working on it. He actually tied me right hand behind me back, so I couldn't use my right Ooh. hand because I was right hand happy. And he was going yeah. to use the jab, Wayne. So the first fight we had, I'm going in there and I'm trying to use the jab, and it wasn't working. I was getting pinged all over the place. And he cut me like two rounds down. I'm losing the fight. And literally, uh, Pat went, uh, Wayne, just go back to what you know, and we'll, we'll start again on Monday. And I went yeah, and yeah. knocked him out in the next round. Wow. So, but yeah, but yeah, yeah and he learned me the fundamentals. I, I, I learned then how important the jab was, which is something yeah, like yeah. seeing my kids today. That's everything up. It's it's the key to everything. The jab is very yeah. underrated. With the jab, Wayne, isn't it? Very underrated. You know, it, like you say, it's a key to the door, isn't it? The jab. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. It's, it sets everything Wayne, up. It, 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 it does. Everything. Yeah. We've got a bit of a delay, Wayne. So sorry if it seems like I'm talking over you. I don't mean to. Um. So, where did the nickname Mad no Dog problem. come from? It was a time when I was I was, I was in boxing till I was about eighteen, and to be fair, me uh, my dad was very supportive, probably a little bit too much. If I'm honest, to try and tell some of the parents tonight has kind of eased back a little bit because it kind of drove me away from the sport. And so, yeah, about the age of 17, 18, old enough to make my own decisions, if you like, and say to me, "Dad, if I want to go to the gym or not," kind of thing. I decided that I didn't want to go to the gym. 
I wanted to have a little bit of fun and go out with my pals and whatever. And, and uh, again, you know, I told you I was that hot-headed kid as a kid. Uh, it all came back when I was out of the sport, out of the sport of boxing. I went out on, on the rampage, to be fair, and got this mad, mad, name Mad Dog. And I was literally, I was a bit of a loose cannon, uh, fighting bouncers and God knows what else. I got back to the, the, the reckless ways again, uh, lost mm-hmm. all my discipline uh, and respect for everyone else. It wasn't a nice period for me, if I'm being honest. It wasn't yeah. a nice period. I wasn't happy with the person I was. People didn't really want to be around me uh, at that time. Uh, and then, unfortunately for me, one of my best pals, he, he uh, committed suicide. I'm sorry to hear that. And then literally, I, 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 was, I was 21 then. I was 21 then. And literally, uh, I'd been out of the sport for a few years. And then in his memory, I wanted to go back into the amateur boxing because he was always saying, you know, what a good fighter I was. And it was a shame that I wasn't doing anything. You wasted, you know. Knocking bounces out of town is not going to get you anything. And uh, I decided to give it a blast. And I went back to my old club and they were laughing at me. They were like, you've been out of the gym for four years. Don't be stupid. We're not going to put you in the championships. So I need to do the championships. I've promised me, pal, I'm going to do it. I want to do it. And uh, so, yeah, literally I went back to a club. I went to a, a new club, Erdington ABC, which is only a stone throw away from my boxing store. And uh, there were guys that I used to box with in my first ever club. There were seniors, but now they've started their own club. And they were like, you know what, Wayne? We don't care, mate. We're in a new club. You know, if you want to go in, we're happy to put you in there. Uh, and they're now in the history books forever and a day. In the 1996 ABAs, Erdington ABC, you will find on the on the roster. So, uh, yeah, like I said, I came back, blasted a few opponents, that read up favourite for it, got beat in the final, uh, and then felt that uh, I felt I felt robbed in the final. If I'm being honest, it was a freestanding case, but in no position of any time for me was I any any sort of difficulty. So I decided yeah. to walk away again from the sport. Uh, I've let my pal down, but I didn't go reckless. I'd got my first child, my daughter. I'd got a normal job and so forth, and just carried on with life. Really, and forgot all about the boxing. And it was only a few years later, when I was 24, me, unfortunately, dad died in a car accident. And uh, I remember going to the funeral. And my dad wasn't really one of them that used to give me a lot of praise when I was boxing. He wouldn't, you know, uh, I could knock a kid out in the first round. He'd tell me about the right hand that was landed on me in the first, yeah. you know, first few shots of the fight, you know, rather than that it were a great win it was. So uh, anyway, to, long story short, we got to the funeral, loads of people there. You know, your dad's always talking about you. You know, he said you was going to be a champion. You're the boxer and all that. He, he never stops talking about you. And I'm like, wow. You know, he actually did praise me and I've never actually heard yeah. it to everyone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like, I feel a complete loss on there because I'm doing nothing really. I'm just in a day job. I need to do something for me, old man. So so uh, obviously it was, it was mad. It was fate how it happened in some respects. I was working for BT at the time. A guy who was working with... Uh, knew a guy called Neil Linford who obviously fought for the British title, Leicester lad. Uh, and literally, he talks about Neil Linford. And I said, well, you know, to be fair, Neil, I nearly boxed him when I was an amateur. And he said, what, you used to box, Wayne? I said, yeah, I did. I said, a long time ago, sort of thing. He went, no, you know, I said, I nearly boxed him. He said, do you know who he was? He was like schoolboy champion, junior champion, England international, all the rest of it. You must have been way up there. I said, I was. When I left the sport, I was like, you know, number two or whatever in the country at the time. Uh, he said, I'll ring his trainer. You're full of shit. I'll, I'll ring his trainer. And literally rang this guy's trainer up. And so I've got this guy here, he said, and he reckons he nearly fought your knee on. And he, uh, he said, what's his name? He said, obviously, it's Wayne Alcock. And he went, put him on the phone, please. And I come on the phone to him. And he said, all right, Wayne, how are you doing? He says, uh, do you fancy coming over to Leicester to do some sparring? Now, remember, I hadn't boxed for four years. Yeah. I said, do you want anything? He said, I remember you, son. He said, you could bang a little bit. You know, he's a quick mover. You could, you could punch. He said, we really need sparring for Neil. We're desperate. I can't make any promises, but you never know where it might lead. Neil's with uh, Frank Maloney at the time. Who knows? If I can get you in, I will. So anyway, cut a long story, do the train. I get back into it now. So I'm trying to beat it. It's 50 miles there. It's 50 miles back. I'm doing that every day after work. I'm running seven days a week. I'm thinking this is my chance to, you know, see if I was as good as what my dad said I was going to be. So uh, it was crazy. And so, yeah, I start doing the training. I start sparring and and sparring with Neil. Then we start sparring and literally caught the eye of the promoter who literally said, you know, who do you box for? So I said, I don't box for anyone. I just worked for BT. He went, you're joking. He said, here's my card. He said, send me a, a video down of what you got. So I sent him the ABAs that I was in, some of the fights from there. Uh, I, I kid you not, a week later, I was in my BT van and the phone call when he was like, I need you in London. You're going to be PA uh, and we're going to get things moving. And I was like, okay, just like that. And there I was, I was in London a few days later, getting my brain scanned in Panic's promotion studios where obviously Lennox Lewis was born and Frank Maloney and all them was there. And it was like, they obviously dug up all my amateur record for England, uh, you know, top yeah. boy in the, in the country, the England amateur and so forth. And the rest was history. The rest is what you've seen, you guys seen after, but it was really uh, a bit of fate, really, I suppose. Sometimes uh, looking back, it was a bit mad. And I think like we've any been a success, really, 
Uh, I suppose that was my little rub of the green, my little bit of luck, just a chance of meeting at work, led me to be become a professional boxer. And then all the way through my career, and you know, I was I was speaking to you early on about, obviously, the last bit was all about money. The first yeah, bit was yeah. never about money. It was all about proving if I could do it for my dad. And I remember yeah. beating uh, Howard Eastman and literally like being like, you know, it was the first time I ever sank to me knees because my dad knew of Howard. Most people knew of Howard. Yeah, you know, just, a big name, let's be honest. Massive for me, massive. And so that was a crowning moment for me, really, winning the British title and, uh, and say it was a, a British title there. I sank to my knees and I just remember thinking to myself, looking up and just thinking, Dad, I've did it. I'm number one in the country. I've, I've, I've beat the man, so to speak. And, uh, and yeah, it was just a crazy experience. I'm not going to say it went downhill from there, but the, the I kind of felt that I've achieved what I wanted to achieve, if I'm being honest. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. the last few thoughts that I had, if I'm being honest, it wasn't really the real me. I put everything into the Howard Eastman fight. Uh, and that was that was my that was my world title, if, if I'm being honest. Uh, well, let's, 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 let's have it right, Wayne. Eastman was a cracking fighter at that time, and you stopped yeah, him. Was, was yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, just come off beating Richard Williams and, and, and grabbing yeah. the couple of title as well. And you know, his only defeats before me, I think, were Edison Miranda, I, uh, Arthur Abrams, William Joppy, and Bernard Hopkins. So to be not the first, a, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not a good call. beating him. Yeah, I, you know, mate, I was scared going into it. You know, I trained like a Trojan and I put a lot into that fight. Uh, and, and I could honestly, if I'm being honest, I could have honestly walked away after that fight knowing that I'd done what I'd proud. You know, that's how I felt. Uh, because I was literally fighting for them and not me. If yeah, I'm being I'll, honest, I'll have to ask you, Ian. Obviously, yeah. after that fight, you ended up with the Abraham fight. Is that is that right? Yeah, yeah, it was because what it was basically, Howard Eastman was already yeah. lined to fight Abraham's anyway. He was already really lined. Yeah, yeah. He went, yeah I'll, I'll come to England. I'll knock I'll knock out in a few rounds, and then we'll do the Abrams fight after. So he kind of like looked past me, and he was looking already at the Abrams fight. They'd already fought already, and he, he, he'd run Abrams quite close to the wire in the fight they'd had before. And I think, yeah, the return was on. So literally, Saren and then contacted me and said, "We've got a bit of spanner in the works here, son." Now that was in September, the end of September, and obviously the fight with uh, with Arthur Abrams was the start of December. Yeah. So you can imagine after a massive camp for Eastman, I had quarter zones in me. I'm not making excuses. I'm not saying I would have beat Abrams if I was in the best position, but I didn't go into the fight at all. Uh, I couldn't spar or anything like that because it just wasn't enough time to recover. It was no. literally, I had to get straight back into camp. And I will be honest, I hated every minute of the lead up and the training for the Abrahams fight because uh, I was in pain for a lot of it. Uh, and it, it was a difficult time after you just had a, you know, a massive training camp for Eastman. It was a 12-week yeah. camp. Uh, it was hard. I knew what I was against Eastman. And he's been is Wayne, Go on, Ray. I was going to say, the thing is, Wayne, a lot of people that I've, I've, you know, because I'm into like reading up on me boxing and, and stuff like that, a lot of people had you ahead on points before Abraham's, uh, you know, before he got you in the fifth. How did you feel you in, 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 in that fight? It, it, you know what? It was crazy because, like, what basically Paddy said to me in my trainer, and uh, you know, God rest, he, he, he's, he's a top man, you know, and uh, he, he resurrected my career for me, Paddy Lynch. You know, he had Rob McCracken, Pat yeah, Caldwell, yeah. good, but you know, they're all on the wall behind me, as you see, all the British champions. Yeah, there. I think I was about yeah. his, his last British champion they had there. Yeah. You know, fantastic trainer, uh, looks after my interests, and he gave that to me. And I said to you earlier, that's what I want to give back to my fighters. I want to be Paddy in terms of what he done for me. He was a, uh, he was very, he, he was well off, so he could make. He wasn't always taking money out of my pocket. He was doing everything he could to help me. And he said, look, son, you know, I've never said to do things for the money, but do this for the money, son. You know, it's too much money. Uh, and so we took the fight, uh, and we pushed them for more money, obviously, which we got. And then we took the fight. And then when I got in there, I thought, you know what, I just want to do twelve rounds. I'm just going to try and enjoy it. I was, I was treating it more like a spa rather yeah. than like, you know, like I'm just if I can get through the 12 rounds, it'll keep my credibility up there. Got a chance to recover after and then we'll see how it goes from there. So I get in there and I'm thinking to myself, like, as I say, I wasn't I wasn't as serious as I usually would be in some respects. I knew the guy carried a lot of punch power. But I remember going in there and not like, trebling the jab up. And I, and I remember coming back after the fourth round, I just cut him. And, uh, and I heard him, as we, as the bell went, his corner was going absolutely mentally. I mean, in his German language, he was giving him a load of grief. I knew it weren't good what he was saying to him. And I thought, yeah. I'm getting this guy. And I yeah. came back to Paddy. I went, Paddy, IBF champion. I could be, win him. Worst thing possible. Go into a fight, not believing you're going to win, and then try and change and say you can. That was my yeah. mistake on the night. So I sat in the corner and went, I can beat him, Pad. He said, watch out for the right hand. Keep doing what you're doing. Just keep moving. I went, no, Pad, he hasn't felt my right hand yet. Literally, again. Overconfident, go out in the next round. Next thing you know, 
boom, I'm back in my own corner and I'm going, what the hell's, what's happened? He literally wiped out two minutes of my life. Wow. You know, this guy can punch and hurt, but literally I've been stopped on my feet, sent back to me. And when I come round, he was literally, what, what, what's going on? What's happened, Pat? He said, what did I tell you about the right hand? But again, if mentally, like the Edward Eastman caught me probably bigger shots, if I'm being honest, in that fight. But in that, my head was telling me, this is my fight to lose, not yours to win. I don't care what yeah. you hit me now. You've buzzed me, but I am not quitting. Abrams, I didn't look at that. I didn't see that. And so, yeah, it's that mental side to it, really, that, that, that beat me on the night in some respects. Because I did feel comfortable, as I say, too comfortable, where I felt like, I can beat this guy. He's not really as good as what I thought. But do you, do you, th do you think Abrahams is quite deceiving? Because when I saw that fight, he was tucking up, you were landing the jab, you were going to his body, you were working him, you were giving him that movement. Do you just think he's deceiving where you think, actually... All he is is a shell. He's not that good. He's physically strong. Yeah. But do, do you think that played part of it as well? Or do you just think perhaps it was, it, like you were saying, it was just, you know, you, you, you kind of yeah, yeah, actually, I can just get rid of him, yeah? I've seen, I've seen the same thing happen with uh, Usyk against Bellew. I've seen the yeah, same yeah, thing yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. These yeah. guys are so smart. They're so smart. They're setting traps all the time. Yeah. There's only one I want quite backwards, I realised he was just setting a trap. They'll let you set the pace. They'll look, you look brilliant. Like Bellew did against Billy Usyk. And my yeah. pal's going, oh, he's going to knock him out. No, no, no. He's just setting up. Next thing you know, left cross job was done. Yeah. You know, yeah. So yeah. they lead you into this full sense. They know it's a 12-round fight. It's not a six-round yeah, fight. Yeah. It's a 12-round fight. And for me, yeah, if I look back at it, let's give, I'll give Abrams the credit he deserves. He's a very smart fight. You know, if you like, in some respect, I actually got a full sense of security, and I think probably Bellew did as well when he fought against you. Yeah, where yeah, you both think, yeah. Yeah, I can, I can beat this guy. They're making him be some sort of monster, and all the lot, all the lot, they're just waiting for that gap to yeah. land the big bomb. Yeah. Carl Frotch mentions that he's very strong on the inside. Very, very How really strong is that? I didn't really get he didn't really get the chance really to be if I'm being honest because I was on my feet most of the time, and he, yeah. he, I, I do think he, I don't think he copes well with movement. I think the first part of the fight when I was following the game plan, if I would have kept with that, I might have gone 12. I probably wouldn't have got the decision because we was uh, over in his, his, his country, you know, the score yeah, with yeah. that. I probably wouldn't have got the decision anyway. As I say, I felt that I was in the fight. Uh, but I'll be honest with you, I asked for the scorecards after and I lost every round. Now, if you've seen the fight, you would. if you said that I've lost every round, then there's no way in a million years I lost every round. But on the scorecards, oh. I've lost every round, believe it or not. Yeah. Well, I mean, as I was saying earlier, when I've read a lot, a lot of people and I've seen the fight back, and you know, and I would agree with most people that you were winning that fight. Yeah, yeah, oh, we felt, but yeah, you know, I wasn't given a round, mate. Literally, I'd lost the fight anyway. So, regardless if I got the twelve, it would have just been obviously not taking an mean, I would have probably still obviously given myself a bit of credibility. But yeah, it is what it is. You know, I went out there, mate. I made a mistake on the date. Some of that I can pass back to my lads. You know, and literally, you know, make sure that when you're going into that fight, I've pulled fighters, you know, I've pulled fighters, I've pulled fights I've had, if they've got in there with the wrong mentality, and I know they're getting in there with that wrong mentality. This game, for me, it doesn't matter how fit you are, it's you don't play boxing. mental. Yeah, you don't play boxing, that's right, Carl, yeah. That, yeah. As hard as that, it's, you know, it's a, it's a massive uh, influence on it. Yeah. We're going to have to ask you, um, I read that you ended up being trained by Patronelli, who trained the, the late, yeah. great Marvin Hagler. Yeah, massive, massive influence on my career. A massive influence. So I remember fighting and uh, uh, avenging the defeat against Lawrence Murphy at the time, which was my only defeat. Yeah. Uh, and avenging the defeat uh, in Birmingham. I got him in Birmingham. I chased him for a few years and I ended up getting that fight back and stopping him. And he never boxed again. So that was enough for me to sort of, you know, move on from there. And again, pro prove myself. And uh, in the audience on that day was Steve Collins. And it was Steve who actually jacked it up with Goody Petronelli. He said, look, you're a good fighter, but you need to go to America and get that American flavour. And yeah, so yeah. I ended up going over to America. And Goody Petronelli ended up being part of my camp for the remainder of my career. Then for the last five years of my career, uh, Goody Petronelli was there. So we'd go to Boston to start. I'd have three or four years in Boston and then come back and then finish with Paddy. If I was younger and I wasn't at such a late stage in my career, then 100% I would have moved to Boston and worked with Paddy. Really? Uh, Pretty cool. So I would have, yeah. It was just I'd got kids here. I'd got, I, yeah. I was pretty lumpy, and it was everything was here. It just did yeah. not make sense at the time. But yeah. I loved working with Goody that much, and and doing the Hagler runs and the Hagler training was just absolutely crazy for me. It took me on to a whole new level. What was, was the story like over in the state win? 
this is what I used to love to. So I'd get there, you'd land from Birmingham, you'd land from, from England and literally you'd have like 12 guys around the, you know, around the ring, if you like. And they'd travel like four, five, six hours and you'd got like Golden Gloves champions, Mexicans, you know, and the styles were so varied every round. It was like they were coming just to do two rounds with the British champion. And so like I'd get there literally off the plane. I'd be doing like 12 rounds spa straight off, two rounds with this guy, two rounds with that guy. And every time it was different flavour. It was a, you know, tough teak Mexican who just kept coming forward and throwing a million and one shots to the kid who was flashy, who had a bit of a Mayweather sort of style about him. And so it really added to my game because I found in England, I had to pay for the sparring most of the time to get good sparring in. Uh, you ended up paying for it. If you like, it was a bit of a baptism. I made sure I was fit when I went there every time because I knew I'd get great sparring and I kind of do a load of sparring, then come back here, work on my fitness even more before British title fights and then get back into my sparring. But it was kind of easier to get back into my sparring second time round rather than getting into it cold because I'd had that massive lot of sparring right at the start. So I do mainly sparring and technical stuff with Goody at the start. We'd work yeah. on different things and then obviously come back and put that into practice when I came back to Paddy over in England and trained and, and obviously prepared for whoever I was going to be facing to defend the British title or whatever it may be. Wayne, you know sparring costs, because that's something these boxing fans don't get sight of. What what sort of money are you looking at to get decent sparring, would you say? Just ballpark? Yeah, ballpark figure. I'd, I'd be probably paying about 150 quid a day for them to come down and yeah. then putting them up in an hotel as well. So it's and, not and cheap then, all though, that food out for them. Yeah, it's not. No, 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 it's not. And especially when, like, you know, I mean, I left when I left Frank Warren, it was because we was due to fight Gary Lockett. This was a fight that was mooted <laughs> before it fell through. It came up again. It was a crossroads fight. I was told, you know, this is a crossroads fight, Wayne. You know, whoever wins this is going to go on to bigger and better things kind of thing. Uh, and I trained like a demon. It was a hard training camp. And then Gary pulled out through injury literally a couple of weeks before the fight. And, and that was like, Frank was just like, this is boxing, son. You know, you can imagine you've spent 150 quid a day plus the you got yeah. your petrol, you got everything else you put in there, and you're getting absolutely nothing back. It's soul destroying, uh, and it's like you know, unless you're the promoter's favourite, which I don't think I was at the time. To be honest, I don't think I was through most of my career. I always had it the hard way. If you look at my career through, you wouldn't say there's yeah. many on there where you can say I had a padded record. You know, I literally jumped straight in there. I thought uh, Serenko in my ninth fight had just beat Gary Lockett. Yeah. You know, it, it, it was tough fights. I always ever, I always got in that ring. The one time I didn't, I ended up getting knocked. Saying that against Lawrence Murphy because I actually thought it was, you know, yeah. they're giving me they give me a, a soft touch here or an easier option. Took me off the prize and ended up, you know, actually uh, getting knocked out, paying the price. But it was good to be able to avenge that down the line. But yeah, you spend all that money. It's a very tough sport, mate. You know, it's uh, the money yeah. you spend and then to just be told this is boxing, son. That ain't good. Yeah. Actually. What about my family? Yeah. Well, food on the table. Yeah. I'm, I'm in debt here. I'm in debt here. I've got no money. I put it all yeah. into the fight because you've told me if I don't win it, basically there's no way to go. And now you're telling me the it isn't going. I'm not going to get on the card. I'm not even going to get an eight because I, I think the score was he didn't really want me to get a warm up fight in before the the return. Well, before the fight we lucky. He wouldn't. He, he, he refused to give me that a warm up fight. Got well, so, no, no. I just think it's just they don't want to give you the upper hand. I mean, Gary. Gary was literally he was Warren's boy. You know, as so we was both with the same promoter. Where I think, you know, obviously Gary was interesting. Uh, and as I say, you know, I think after, even after I'd lost, I mean, I remember trying to uh, sort fights out before. And then I, I was on the, not the top tail end, because I come into the sport late. Obviously, I was quite old. I, I finished when I finished, I was 37. So, you know, I was old. But if I'm being honest, I lived the life. I've still walked around at the weight now in some respect, and I'm 47. So, yeah, fit, yeah. you know, uh, I really felt that. Yeah, I, I could have carried on till easy 40, easy. And still, Bernard Hopkins was a massive inspiration for me. He proved yeah. that age is just a number. I felt like smarter, a lot wiser. Uh, it's just that our life planned out. Ended up uh, losing to Matt. The story behind that uh, was literally, I, I really shouldn't have been in the fight. And it, it, this was like, before going into the fight, I, went in, I was actually trained for a broken leg, believe it or not. I trained yeah. for a broken leg for that fight. You would not believe it. It was, it was an accident, by the way. Uh, me being an idiot, uh, Hennessy Sports had just left Sky Sports Boxing and gone to ITV. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, we didn't know when the fight date was going to be. We knew Macklin was mandatory. We didn't know when the fight date was going to be. I was told it was months and months away. And so, literally, I run a Sunday League football team. So, I do a little bit of stuff in my community. Yeah. So, I started a load of football teams. Because when I was a kid, there was no football team for me. I had to go and play for all the posh areas around it. So, I wanted right. to put some in area. So, you could play for the area you grew up in. So, I started all these football teams. up. So, I used to manage the older team. And anyway, the one day, they was, you didn't play, you won't have a game, Wayne, because I do like my footy. I played at a decent level. 
Anyway, cut a long story short, went on the pitch, ended up breaking my leg. So I broke my leg playing football like an idiot. Uh, so we go to the hospital and the hospital said, it's okay, it's not broke. Oh, thank God for that, you know, thank God for that. So Paddy goes, right, then we've just had this made and you need to get back in the gym, son. All right, so we start doing the training. And uh, I said, it's all right, Pat. I was on crutches when I got back to the gym, obviously, because I just said it's bruised. It'll be all right. Anyway, I started training and, and he said, we'll get around that. So we've done like weights and we've done the row machine and we've done, you yeah. know, he was doing the step, but anything away from it. I couldn't run. I couldn't run yeah. 10 metres, basically. I, it was that much pain with it, but I just thought it was because it was bruising and whatever. Anyway, we <laughs> start training and, and I'm on the stepper and we used to do 12 three-minute rounds on the stepper. We like a, a minute rest in between, just like a fight scenario, get the cardio going. Anyway, yeah. I'm on this step, and there's tears coming down my eyes, basically, and Paddy's going, son, there's something not right. I'm going, Paddy, it's all right. I'm a machine, not a man. You know, it, it's fine. I'm going to be all right. No, he said, I'm not happy with this. So he put me into his private doctor, and we went on an MRI, and he told me the bad news, basically. I hadn't just broke one. I hadn't just broke my fibula. I broke my tibia as well. I trained on a broken leg, basically, and cracked straight through him. But such is the desire and the mentality of myself was that I trained through a broken leg, literally. Yeah. Uh, the problem was then they couldn't put me in a cast because we'd gone two weeks over uh, the, the the original thing. So it had to let nature take his natural course. I changed my style. People come to watch me sparring and they were like, Wayne, you know, why aren't you moving around the ring and stuff? I said, oh, that's all Matt. What Matt will think is I'm just going to be moving around the ring. But basically when I get in there, I'm just going to take him. I'm just going to walk him down. Literally, I was sparring against Danny McIntosh, Tony Oakey, like yeah. everyone. I was yeah, pushing like heavyweight, yeah. Yeah, I was pushing them back, you know, I was pushing them back with this style of just marching them down, really, because I could box both ways in, in times. Right, mm -hmm. so we do the fight, we do all the training. Uh, I had to starve myself to make the weight because obviously I couldn't run when running was a massive part of my career. Uh, so I starved myself to make the weight, which only made the leg worse. So the day before the weight, I'm in agony because obviously there's not enough calcium in there. It's killing me. Yeah. But, you know, obviously I could walk on it. But, uh, so, cut a long story. I'm, 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 I can do this fight. It's only Matt. You know, I've sparred Matt in the past. I can do this. I'm just not walking down. I'm going to surprise him. Literally. I remember, and this is mad, this is, I remember they were just saying, Wayne, you know, when you're ready to go, son, they call TV coming to me. And Matt was just coming past the door at the time. And he, he was on the back of uh, Joe Gallagher was in front of him. And he just gave me a steely look. And, and to be honest with you, I went there and then, I went to Paddy. I went, Paddy, I ain't done my road running. He went, oh, that, give me all that now. You know, you've been doing like, you've been rowing like an Olympic rower. You, you, you fit, you, you know, you can, you'll be all right. You'll be fine. So, but I ain't done my running. But I really, really relied on running. Always did. So not to be able to do it was a killer. And I, I, I not to say it's an excuse, but I used it. I, it just, it killed my confidence. So I remember going up to the ring and they're going like, I'm thinking, okay, I always used to like the blue corner for whatever reason. So I thought, okay, I'm in the blue corner, great. So he gets in the ring and I goes in the blue corner. I went, Wayne, you're not in the blue corner. Matt had actually gone into oh, the ring. No. Red corner, Red corner oh, yeah, yeah. one of these days. So I thought, you know what? Just get me out as soon as you can. Listen, I'm not going to take a dive purely because I don't want my, my purse we've held. But so we get in the ring and we start boxing. And for some reason, I, everything I was doing went totally out the window because when I sparred Matt, it used to be literally I'd move and he couldn't deal with the movements as well. So what did I do? In my head, I'm thinking I've got to move. So I'm moving around the ring, but I do like two rounds like that. And I'm saying, Pad, my leg's killing me. He said, you're going to have to yeah. stand up. You're going to have to stand. And I thought, oh, I haven't really got much left in me now. I've got to try and stand it out and have a gunfight, if you like. But again, wrong mentality going in there and, 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 and having no belief that I was actually going to win the fight. So literally, I remember him catching me with his shot. And I remember going down on the floor and just thinking, like, this is it now. Uh, go on, then take me out. And I get back up and I thought, come on, you got to finish me off then, mate. You're going to finish me. You're going to have to finish me on my shield. And then obviously he throws a few more shots until the ref stops it. But every time he was hitting me, I was just thinking, if only I was in, you know, if only my leg weren't yeah. broke. So just yeah. Like, yeah. it really yeah. hit away at me. I promise you, that was the only bit that really hit away at me in my career because I really felt I'd let the people down who come to watch me. I was all about the fans. I was all about yeah. the people who come to watch me. And I was really disappointed myself. And if you, you probably wouldn't have known, but I had, I had a, a charity fight about two years ago against Tony Oakey. And it was a way, and all the people that were at that fight, the close people to me came to it. It was at the Blues ground. We'd done six three-minute rounds. We knocked 10 balls out of each other. And I grabbed the mic after, and I just, I felt that was a little bit of a, uh, if you like, saying, you know, sorry. And, and I said, like, you yeah. know, you didn't actually get to see me in my last fight. So I actually... Was, was that a bit of a consolation, that fight with Tony Yorkie, that, that exhibition? Yeah, I had to get it out of my system. I had to get it out of my system. Uh, I'd put a little bit of weight on, obviously, since I'd retired. So I chose Tony being a light heavyweight. Uh, it made sense to do that and I knew he was going to bring it to me and it, it was a cracking fight honestly we, there was nothing out back obviously we didn't want to knock each other out because we raised 36 yeah. charity 
but and he was doing it all for nothing as well. Do you know what I mean? So it was a fantastic night. And my son uh, had, had his debut on the night for my amateur club as well. So it's a box on the same card as my son. The show. It was beautiful, but it was a way of me saying sorry to the people who came and paid their hard earned money for the Macklin fight because you never actually got to see me. Uh, I chased that fight back, beat myself up after it. Got the Darren Barker fight for the British and Commonwealth because Macklin gave the British belt up soon as he won it to move on to pasture, other pastures. I wanted to chase Macklin then. I wanted to put something right. I'd never been beat amateur or pro by anyone twice ever. So I wanted, yeah. to, I wanted to try and do that again. So I thought, yeah, I've got to get back to Macklin. How do I get to him? British and Commonwealth. So I start training for that fight. I'm on fire. Hennish Newell was on fire. We was with the same promoter. He didn't want the fight. We had to force the board to make that fight with Barker. I'm not saying he was worried about me, but I, he knew that it wasn't me in there. He wanted me to go on the telly after I fought Macklin and tell the audience that I broke my leg. I'm so glad I never. You're hearing it now, but I'm so glad I never. I just said it was a bad day at the office. It would have been David A all over. I didn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want that. Yeah. I didn't want to discredit him like that. What I wanted people to think was that, or what I wanted Matt to think was that's the best Wayne Alcock he's ever faced. And, and then I'll shock him like, like I did with Lawrence when we meet again, because he couldn't believe it's like a different fight. When my mind's on, I've never yeah, lost yeah. the when my mind switched on. So, yeah, so I didn't do it after the fight. So I start training again. We get ready for Barker. I'm on fire. I'm, good. I'm, I'm get, grabbing this British Commonwealth. Unfortunately for me, became ill. Like the week of the fight, went down to just under 11 stone. Went to me doctors. Uh, and you know, gastritis. I couldn't stop throwing up both ends, mate. It was terrible. And I was like, I can't. And obviously, you're trying to make weight anyway. So it weren't yeah. a good thing. I was weak anyway. Uh, and the doctor signed me off, said, like, you know, he's 10 stone 13. <laughs> Remember, 11 six is the middleweight limit. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Then that's the board. And obviously, then he stepped in. And I can't remember who he fought on the night, but he fought someone else on the night. I then chased the boxing board and said, look, I'm mandatory for the British and Commonwealth. When do I get my chance? And they're like, Wayne, you've just you've just threw it in. Basically, you're going to have to wait your turn. Well, I was 36, 37 at the time, thinking I haven't got a you know, great deal of time left. Uh, it took me 18 months to fight Eastman. You made me fight Steve Bender before it for the English title. You put all yeah. our obstacles in there, you know. So did I have that time? But yeah, listen, I'm just going to crack on with it because I've still got a mission. I still want to chase. Hopefully, I can get this rematch with Matt down the line and we can get things sorted. In the meantime, while I was ticking over, I'm in the local leisure centre and someone from the council approached me and said, all right, when are you doing? He said, uh, what are you doing with yourself in the day? I said, well, I'm just ticking over at the minute. I haven't really got any fights panned or anything at the moment. He said, well, why don't you work with some naughty boys? And I went, well, I've never done that before. He went, I think you'd be great. You're a local kid. You've come from nothing. You know, they, the kids can't say to you, you know, you don't know what it's like growing up here because you did and you made some of your life. Do you want to train yeah. these naughty boys? So they sent me this naughty lad. And literally, uh, when he turned up with his school uniform, uh, one kid they sent me, this is the worst kid going. He's a nightmare. He's just been expelled from school. He's uh, he, he's just he just he won't stay on sessions. Literally, he just walks off most of the time. So he comes on this first session, my first experience in coaching. I had to go and get, believe it or not, a boxer size. Like I was a pro trainer at the time. I'd got that with Paddy, but I had to go and get a boxer size license just so I could train kids. And then I get up with DBS and whatever, obviously. So I go. Yeah. Uh, this kid turns up in his school uniform. He's like, I don't care who you are. I don't want to do it. I'm only here because she's bought me. He was only 11. I'm thinking, oh, here we go. First experience on it. He don't want to know. So I said, right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do a bit of skipping for you. So I got the skipping rope out. Started showing him a few little tricks with the rope. And yeah. stuff. So I can show you how to do it. He said, no, nah, I'm not interested. I thought, all right, got the gloves on. Done a little bit on the bag. Showed him some combinations. I'm, like, you think, you know, no, I'm not interested. So I said to the guy who was with him, can you stand up with him? And I'll just run you through some of the basics. What hand you right with, Son? He said, I right me left hand. I said, oh, you're a safe for all right, get up then, get your right leg forward and starts running through some of the base. I went, you know what? You've got something about you, you have, son. You've got something about you. I said, let me take you on the pads. So I got the pads on. I went, there's only like 10 minutes left now. I said, but let me get you on the pads quick. I just want to see what you're all about. And so I get him on the pads. I could see he was getting into it. I went, we've got to get out of here now. We're out of time. I said, bro, hopefully I'll see you next week. Well, that next week turned into the next 11 years. He was actually the first professional boxer I've just signed. Wow. Boxer, really? Amateur boxer, all the way through the amateurs and then turning professional. Uh, with the Cronk Birmingham setup that I've just set up recently. I've done it for them. Uh, uh, you know, it was literally, I had to go to London. I had no choice. I loved it in Leicester, training with Jez Brogan over there. But I was told, boy, powers above. If you want to move forward, you got to come to London. So I'm trying to do it where a kid can start with me and finish with me. You know, that's mm -hmm. the key to it, really. Uh, and just, mate, it's hard enough as it is. It was hard for me being in London, knowing absolutely no one, yeah. stuck in a little box room every night. I just remember getting in the ring at that time and thinking to myself, there's no way I'm losing this fight, mate. You know, I'm, I'm, mm. I'm missing my daughter. Yeah. I'm away from home. It's just, it's, the game's hard enough as it is without making yeah. it harder. 
So I'm just trying to make it easy for my kids now. They've now got a pathway through the amateurs, which I've done for nine years. We've had six national champions and England international through that time there. I felt I've earned my stripes. Now, after nine years, it was time yeah. to move into the pros again. Unfortunately, yeah, you... the pandemic come along and really stopped their, yeah, their yeah. debut in May. But, you know, it's, 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 it's pending and it will happen. And, you know, my dream now is to create, we've created national champions for the area in amateur boxing. I want to do it in professional boxing. And going with Kronk, which is we all know, we all any any boxing fan in the world knows who Kronk are. Oh, yeah, I, well, definitely. I've, I've still got some of the T-shirts in the, uh, in yeah, the cupboard. Yeah, but, yeah. But when you, you, you've got loads of stuff going on. You've obviously got Kronk Birmingham. And you, you've still got Box Clever as well. Yeah, yeah, that's still running. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. out there every day training the kids and, uh, you know, giving back to different areas. And it, it, it's just, Box Clever was created. It was called Box Clever because the first interview I ever done as a boxer, uh, I remember in the local paper saying Wayne's boxing clever, and it was because they said I've got a career behind me in terms of being a BT yeah. engineer, a telephone yeah. engineer. Yeah, and if, not. Uh, yeah, when I said to him in the interview, if it don't work out, at least I've got my job, at least I've got a good, you know, decent career I can keep progressing with. So at least it's good. So it's one of the main things I do. I do a lot of mentoring, I mentor kids, I go into schools talking to kids, and I say to them kids that were well, perhaps like me, I remember my old French teacher commenting on a Facebook post uh, not long back, to be mm. fair. And he said, well done, son, you did. You did Because I remember saying at school it was French. I was like, son, I don't need French, sir. Where I'm going, I'm going to be I'm going to yeah. be a pro boxer. I don't need French. But obviously, it didn't work out for me that way, as you know from my story. But obviously, he said, you said you'd do that and you did. But I'm just there to prove that, you know, it could be an injury. It could be anything that stops you getting there. And don't get me wrong, I'd love to see every kid succeed. But some things get in the way. And the other thing I'd say is by having an education. Unfortunately, I didn't leave school with much, but I had to educate myself after I remember leaving school. I got a certificate when I left school. Uh, it's still there. I show the kids there now. It was the survival award for the person that was most likely to be excluded, but survived and improved beyond recognition. Now, that was when I took up boxing at the age of 14. My whole life turned round. I tried it, but it was too late for me, as you know. I'd missed all the GCSEs and the, the path that I should have took. It wasn't that I wasn't smart, and it used to drive the, the teachers absolutely crazy. But my only interest, I wanted to be, you know, I was just a loose cannon. I wanted to be the class clan, basically. And if you yeah. cock it, well, it didn't look clever if you were smart. You know, it was yeah, just yeah. Silly. and I'm trying to get rid of that to the kids now. Yeah. Say, you can be hard and still yeah. smart, mate. You know, yeah. when you're older, what it is for me, when you're older, I want to so see when I was sat there, I could deal with Sourland, Warren and whatever. I can go through contracts and go, yeah, I don't want that. I don't want this. I don't want that. Yeah. I haven't got a pay for someone to do it. I'll do it myself. Yeah, it took a little bit longer than most, but I'll do it myself. You need to be smart enough to be able to do that. I was smart enough to create free businesses after I'd finished. I was smart enough to not have to work for anyone after. And it is, it's 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 more brain power than it is actually being a millionaire and being able to as I say, there's a very such a small percentage. And that's what I try and give the kids give back to the kids now. So, you know, yeah. hopefully make sure that I believe that anyone in the sport, if they get like British, European titles, Commonwealth, World Title Tilt, yeah. if they're smart with their money. They can still be involved in the sport or whatever they choose to do if they're smart with the money. The trouble is with us, like I said, the first part of my career, I, I, Johnny, I was I was an idiot to be fair. I spunked every penny, you know, to be fair. It was like, let's get a flash car. What I wanted to do, and I'll be honest, there was a method behind it. My method was when you see me in the area, a local kid who grew up with absolutely nothing, I boxed my first four fights in someone else's boots, didn't have my subs half the time. My parents had no money. And, and so when you've had no money to having money, yeah. Yeah, and, you, and then you kind of like, I'm a pro boxer, and you want all the kids to sort of like look up to you, like look up to you in the same like, hey, well, hey. I wanted to put boxing in a good light. So yeah. me driving in the convertible car and wearing all the designer gear was like, that's the life to lead. But in yeah. all fairness, I've got no money in the bank. <laughs> you know, it was like, and you, Wayne, it, it, I mean, I'll never, I'll never know this, way, Wayne, but I guess it is a skill, isn't it, when you come from nothing to having, let's say, these boxers or football, it, it transpires into other sports, doesn't it? You yeah. come from working class backgrounds. You sign a contract, with, let's say Liverpool, the greatest team in the land, by the way. <laughs> all, all of a sudden, they're, they're on million, they're on millions a year, and the head yeah. goes, you see them in the paper and everything, don't you? So there needs to be something there. The difference between with footballers. The reason I started box clever, I play mm -hmm. for Birmingham City Football Club, the former players' association. I'm not. Never heard of them, Wayne. Wayne, who are they? Where do they play? Anyway. I ain't gonna get involved. I'm gonna get involved now if you're a Liverpool fan from Nottingham. But there you go. Yeah, but it was them guys there. Literally, a lot of the old time footballers didn't make a great deal of money. They got into coaching. Yeah. They were doing. 
thought, you know what? I can do this with boxing. Why does, why has no one done this with boxing? Yeah. And Clever was actually built to be a franchise, you know, if I'm being honest. It could have been Wayne Alcock's box clever, but it also could have been, I don't know, Carl Frost, it wouldn't be Carl, you know, but like, he had to be someone who was a champion. He was yeah. made for someone who was a British champion, at least, to be able to inspire the kids. But I, I've given all my program notes, you know, Stuart Hall? Yes, Stuart yeah, Hall, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I give Stuart Hall all my pro. He's got some similar now starting up where he is now. Uh, and Norton. Yeah, that's it, yeah. He's got some, and I gave him all the notes. I've got no problem doing that. There you go, son. Have all them. Yeah. You know, if you can take anything away from it, do. But originally, it was built where I would go in there, I would open the program for them, and that be your baby, that's yours, yep. that's your life after you give him back to the kids. Who else is it better to be trained by than a former British champion? Yep. Inspire the kids. Now, I don't actually go on any of these programs and say to the kids, I I'm just, I'm waiting, I'll come here to train you and learn you how to box and whatever. I don't actually give them a resume of what I've actually done and what I've achieved and where I've been. I don't, because I want you to love the sport first, not me. So you do the session and the kids at the end of the session are like, Wayne, you know, like, you know what you do, mate? Have you done a bit before? I've done a little bit. You might find me on YouTube or whatever it may be. And they'll go away. And like, obviously, I've got them buzzing. They love the sport. I can't wait to get to Wayne. But then they come back next week and it's amplified purely because now they've found out who's actually training them. You know, it's... Yeah. It, look, the thing is, Wayne, you're very, you're very credible, aren't you? I mean, uh, we've only been talking for 40 minutes, but the passion you've got, the passion you've got for what you do, it comes across. It's in yeah, the it art. It. Honestly, so I, I think you're a, you, you're a credit to not only Birmingham, but the West Midlands. You really are. The work you put in, the reading I've done about you, I just want to say, well done. What what what, what, what work you've done, fella. You should give yourself a pat on the back. Oh, mm -hmm. You know, and, and I don't blow smoke, um, but but wow, the work you the work you've done, fella. <clears throat> um, oh, I appreciate yeah. that, honestly, man. Yeah. I don't look there was, there was something I heard about uh, some of your your work in the gyms. Is it? Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see it as a big thing as a state. Well, you should because it, it, you know we, it, it's astounding what you've achieved. You know, you've, yeah. you've, done it off, all, you've done it all off your own back as well, fellow, haven't you? You know, so it's just that, it, it, you know, pat on the back where it's credit where it's due, Wayne. There was something I heard, Wayne, that yeah, the, police, the police had told you that the yeah, crime rate had gone down. All the money I earned in boxing, I, I, I invested back into the sport again because boxing changed my life and I just wanted to change other people's lives in all areas. We train disabled kids in the gym. We train everyone, basically. I want boxing for everyone. I run a boxing yeah. job now. I start the job purely because uh, in terms of like passion, I'm not going to just sell you any product. If I wouldn't wear it myself, I wouldn't sell it. It's not a sales ploy. Anyone will tell you that. I'm not trying to throw a kid out the door in a pair of 200 gloves, gloves uh, 200 pound gloves if he's just started. I'm literally, this is where you're starting. So I don't care if your parents have got the money to buy their gloves. I'm not bothered. You've got to earn them. See my raise, which are hanging up in the store and they are, they're hanging up in the store. I had to earn them, mate. I didn't have that raise set till I become a champion. You yeah. know, and that's what, you know, when an actual thought will come back, then that's when you can get. So it's, it's kind of like just making sure, I don't know, anything you do, not my boxing career, like my shop, like the coaching, everything we've done was passion. There was times at the start where literally, I, I kid you not, I didn't have a fiver in my pocket, but I didn't care. I'd, I'd spent yeah. all my money. I was getting an earache off my missus who had a completely different life when I was boxing. And I was taking it right back to like the, the bare bones. It's like, you got a five, we've got no milk in the fridge. I'm like, oh, geez, here you go. You know, but you know, what she said, why don't you give it? If you're not going to box again, go and get a proper job. I said, this is a proper job for me. This is yeah. something completely different. I, I, I mean, I don't know. It isn't a job I'm doing. I haven't worked for the 11 years I've retired because I love every day. There's not one day, regardless of how much money's been in the bank, that I've actually gone, oh, I've got to go to work today. I'm in the shop now, but I was buzzing to get up the small pub early this morning. I was in the shop. I'm looking forward to seeing the kids coming through. The shop I did not want to do, by the way, but it was just a matter of I was fed up with people going to other stores and getting the wrong information, coming back with the wrong size gloves, the wrong, the wrong everything. I'm like, so for me, it's a completely different thing. So it started as passion. I thought, well, can I really get a lot out of retail? I've never done it in my life. People said, again, a bit like the box clever thing. You must be mad putting your money in that, mate. You've never done it before. It won't work. It's stupid, you know, they've done it the same with the retail. What have you done in retail? What are you doing that for, mate? You don't know anything about it. And I don't, but I know boxing. And so I, and it's mad because I'm in here and I'm giving kids coaching lessons, you know, like literally they're in the shop and they're telling me different things. I'm like, come here then, some stand up. And I'm, I'm correcting them on some of the stuff and I'm helping them out and I'm giving them advice. We had Casimir in here. That was a big buzz for me. Manning back, Pacquiao's manager. He come in just before the wow. Tete fight and bought his wow. off. And 
know, pictures and stuff about Team GB boys, British champions, Lennox Clark, who's obviously just won there. The yeah, 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 against Willie Hutchinson. You know, I'm really, I'm, I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful, and I think that's because the guys know I, I, I'm the, I'm the real deal. I'm genuine and I'm passionate about what I'm doing. That we've got the boxing community behind what I'm doing because without them, I don't, you know what? I don't get a buzz at all about online. We do online, doesn't bother yeah. me whatsoever. I don't get a buzz out of that. I want to get you the right gear, get you in the shop and get you the right gear. And, and, and the buzz I get off a guy when, he, you know, he's defending his British belt on Saturday and he's in my shop on a Wednesday or Thursday. Oh, the yeah, buzz. Yeah. And the little kid who's, never, who's just starting to box and needs his little starter kit and that, the buzz I get off him. You know, the ones who come in there and tell me the struggle against this opponent or that opponent, come here, let me show you what to do, son. Yeah, and yeah. Coaching yeah. store as well. So, and so, yeah, so on that side, it's kind of like, I think I've filled the void of being retired. I've been able to put my head up as a yeah. same. I needed to do the Tony Oki thing a few years ago for my own peace of mind. That would have way closure. Way money, money money can't buy that buzz feather, can it? Nah, not at all, mate. No, it's like, to be honest with you, this sounds a bit cheesy, but I'm going to go there anyway because you've already <laughs> done me about being a Liverpool fan from Nottingham. So I might as well, well throw all my hats in the ring. <laughs> when, when we've only been going on this channel for five, six weeks, but the buzz we all get from doing this channel. Yeah. I don't care if they don't go anywhere, Wayne. So I can draw parallels with you because we've got that much drive that we're just having a crack. Do you know what I mean? We're having a laugh. Boxing fans are coming on and sharing the thoughts. Yeah. You kind of jumped on. So it gives you that drive, Wayne, doesn't it? You know, you want to go that, that next level, then yeah. you want to go to the next level, then the next level. So I, I do see where you're coming from. And you must get that sense of yeah. job satisfaction. You know, what's in the yeah, bank's in the bank. Right. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I, I am, I am a winner. It's just my mentality. Something my dad instilled in me from a young boy. You don't get nothing yeah. for second place. You know, you don't get nothing for second place. He instilled all the beliefs uh, and the mindset of a champion, which I'm trying to give back through my coaching and through working with kids. Now, my coaching business is not just about making a champion in the boxing ring; it's a champion in life. Every yeah. job I've had, I've always got to the top of the tree. Now, regardless of age, I was 18 in charge of guys that were 30 odd years of age. Because I just had that, and they they'd say to the gaffer that I'm intimidating. I just want to get the job done. I want to be number one. I started the shop, and it, I used to say the shop. It's you know it's the the best shop in Birmingham. Now we say we're the best shop in the Midlands. I want to be the best shop in the country eventually. I, it's just my yeah. mindset. It's just the way yeah. I'm programmed, yeah. the way I'm working. Play to win, I want Wayne. the best project. Yeah, you play to win, don't you, fella? You play to win. Yeah, and I love I it. it. And when, when someone tells me it can't be done. I love it. I mean, you're lucky I've got a tracheostomy in my throat. People say I won't be able to do a channel because I've got a trachea. Who are you to tell me I can't do a channel? So I'm going to go and do a channel now. I'm going to show you. It's motivation, isn't it? The best yeah. form of any success is proving people wrong. Uh, and I've loved it time and time again. I've loved it against David Eastman. I loved it when Buddy McGuigan rubbished me at 25 turning professional and said I couldn't go very far because of my age. I love that. Keep telling me that. You know, my missus, yeah. believe it or not, has been the biggest inspiration for me because she didn't believe what I was going to get in terms of box club. It went from from literally uh, two sessions a week and one man in a borrowed van to two vans, 52 sessions yeah. and six coaches. You know, it, and, and just, it, it's just, it's completely, it's but she's impressive. been a blessing on that point. Yeah, mate. I don't even see it as a big thing. That's the crazy thing about it. we got the WBC well, mate. Good. Uh, for the work that I do. we got a 100% crime reduction in an area where a kid had been stabbed and murdered. Oh, went in yeah, there, got yeah. a crime reduction. Uh, we got some, most of them kids are in my gym now, boxing. Uh, yeah. Has that, been, has that been the police coming to you, Wayne, and saying, look, you're doing such a good job. The crime rate's gone down. No, literally, the police brought me in where a kid had been stabbed and murdered. They said, could you come and do some sessions? Because it's a mobile boxing ring box, Cleveries. And can you oh, come and yeah, do some yeah, sessions? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Anywhere, anywhere. If you've got space, we can get the gym up. It's got the bags on there. It's got the ring. And we get a little a full little boxing gym to you. My idea behind it was rather than having a gym and saying, you come to me, I'll come to you. Don't Let's not make excuses. Yeah. Yeah. Where is it? Let's know where you are. Where's the rough area then? Give me a rough area. Let's go in the middle of that area and let's make a difference. So most people are surprised when they see me actually doing the sessions. They think it's going to be someone else. Uh, doing the mm -hmm. sessions, but obviously I'm there, and then they have to face, obviously face myself in terms of if there's any uh, pros yeah, and cons yeah. of it and whatever it may be. But yeah, we went in an area, you could have been stabbed and murdered. And literally, the first time we went there, we set the ring up, and the uh, the coaches come into me. I was in I was in the back room uh, training some of the kids. It was like a little shop unit they'd let us let out, and we got the ring at the front. And they came in. I was a bit worried for the for their own safety. 
like, you know, it's kicking off out there, Wayne. There's parents saying, you know, this is all wrong. You're teaching fighting and, and someone's just been stabbed and murdered. The flowers are still down from where the kid just got stabbed and murdered. And also I walked out and obviously approached his parents that was kicking off. And I went, all right, mate, what's your problem? He says, look, Wayne, he says, you know, this is wrong. I said, why do you think it's wrong, mate? He went, well, you know, you're teaching fighting. I said, we're not teaching fighting, mate. We're teaching discipline and respect. I said, if them yeah. guys that were fighting with their knife had learned how to box, you think that got, I said, I've never ever felt the need to carry a knife in my life. This is my weapon. This is my weapon. If it was their weapon, then the guy would still be alive today. You know, so it's you, you're completely misjudging what boxing brings to you. In all fairness, when I started boxing, the reason why I got that certificate I spoke about earlier was because I stopped fighting. I stopped being a hothead. I could take it on the chin, so to speak. And the summit that I preach to kids now, we're not just learn you how to attack, we learn you how to defend. Uh, and in some respects, being cock of the school, I was always on that kind of lot. Where, where people were trying to shoot me down. So I remember one guy was after me for a few years, kind of thing in terms of wanted that man. So come on, Alcock, I want to fight you. I want to fight you. I went, I can't fight you. I'm boxing. If I fight you now, I'll lose my license. And this is what my trainer is instilled into me. I can't do it. This is now a weapon. So he said, I want to fight you. I said, all right, sorry, but you've got to hit me first. So I remember like literally taking my blazer off and that, and there's a big crowd gathering around us, the big fight kicking off. I went, come on, you got to hit me first. So he throws his shot, and I'm like, literally, should be here just about now. We ain't like, catch. I'm going to tell you, you've got to hit me. Throws another one again, little swing out of the way. Mister, until you hit me, I can't do anything. Come on. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, throws three shots. He gets pissed off a bit big time. He's like, forget this alcohol, because you ain't going to fight. And he starts walking away, and he looks that small, and everyone yeah. around us is like, red off. And I'm like, literally, what happened if I hit you back? Now, the thing for me is I did that on accident i was only a young man but i'm so glad i did that and it's something that i preached to the kids now because i made him look that silly i didn't yeah. uh, put him in a bad light in some respect but he decked him and i could have when you learn how to box everything straight you know yeah, you, you yeah. know against the average man on the street he wouldn't have been no problem i was mega fit at the time but what would that have done for boxing not a lot fog boxing and it would have given it a bad name so i'm so proud i didn't do it on purpose by the way it was just an accident that it happened that way i just didn't feel he was any competition yeah. so it wasn't like fighting like you know an england champion or whatever a new air to box i didn't yeah. get a bullet fighting the man in the street he kind of switched me off that you know what you're gonna get out of that nothing absolutely nothing give me a proper fight where i can win proper things and that's kind of what i try and put across i've excluded kids from my gym that have used boxing that i've been told they've used boxing uh, if they've been in school, so to speak, and if they've yeah. used, I've, I've actually excluded them from the gym. I hate bullying. I hate bullies. Uh, I hate anyone who uses the sport outside of in the boxing ring where it actually matters. So yeah. I've had kids in there. I've excluded a few kids from my club that I've found in the past. And it's unfortunate. It's going to happen every now and again. You're going to get a kid who goes in there who, who tries to use these skills for, 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 for no good whatsoever. Uh, but when I've had that, I've actually had the parents and I've had the kid and I've said, look, you know, you're excluded from my club, son. You know, it's as simple as that. I've not, I won't have it. I won't have a bite of it. It's bringing yeah. the club name down, my name down, and that, and boxing down. And it's yeah. all about. But I, I love this. I, I can, I can not. What look what it's done for me life. It's just been. Yeah. It's obviously. I, 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 it's all about just giving back now and and enjoying the rest of my life really, and still trying to create a few champions on the way. We well, have to ask you: do, do, do you still do you still watch boxing? Is in like do you still keep up the date with like you know the 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 middleweight scene now, for example. Do I still watch boxing? Yeah, yeah. Do you still, do you still watch it? Yeah. Of course he does. Yeah. I, 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 good. I, I love it, yeah. I, I still watch a hell of a lot of it, yeah. I do watch as much as I can. It's difficult. It's more difficult than these days, obviously, because I'm running the free beat. I do everything myself, unfortunately. It's, it's mad. Uh, it's kind of like if you want a job done right, do it. I don't know. I suppose it's that perfectionist sort of element that you've got. I really do need to give some of my jobs to other people. Uh, but, yeah, it's De just... Delegation, it's Wayne. Delegation. I, I should do, and I'm told this all the time because I'm trying to do stuff. I'll be honest with you. This is how I'm wired. Is literally I could go to sleep at two in the morning, for instance, just because I've got to finish invoicing and whatever it might be. Yeah. I'm up at six or seven o'clock. I'll, I'll sleep. I'll go on four hours every day, just on positive energy, just on the vibe. I yeah. could be up at six, seven with my kids, and I'm ready to go again. I'm not tired. I'm ready to go. Let's go. Let's not waste another day. I don't know how long I'll be able to do this for, but at the minute, <laughs> no. for the last 10 years, you know, I'll be honest with you, the first lockdown, I don't really, it's quite negative talking about the lockdown, but the first lockdown we had actually enjoyed because it was the first time ever that I'd had a break in like 11 years and, yeah. and I got mm. to see my kids. My two youngest children, Wayne and Lucy, are 13 and age, 13 and 8. Now, they were born, I've got an older daughter, as I told you about. Yeah, yeah. I never actually seen 
them as stepdaughter as well. But they're older now. They've gone through uni and all the rest of it. They're like 25 and 23. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. All their life, because I was boxing, I was in the States, I was here, I was there, I was on the phone. It was, it was So Wayne and Lucy have come along because literally, it was actually born 20 days before my British title win. So another inspiration, another <laughs> drive yeah. to want to win. You know, it's crazy to want to win belt for him, really. Uh, and I moved away from the family home when she was going through the pregnancy. She wouldn't let me do it on the second kid. Just quickly, we went in there and I said, literally, uh, a friend said she's gone into labour. I went, OK, uh, do you know how long it'll be? She goes, no, I'm not sure. I'm with, just with an ass. Well, listen, I've got Eastman in a few weeks' time and that. I need to get me sleep. I've got to do me run and all the rest of it. Like, can you let me know a little bit nearer to the time? <laughs> oh, my <laughs> day. So, literally, so a pal rings me up at like eight o'clock in the morning. She says, Wayne, she says, I think she's about to give birth and I've got to go to work. I was like, okay, thanks, Cass. Nice one. I'll, I'll get over there now straight away. I got there at about half eight, and literally Wayne was born two minutes later. You <laughs> lucky boy. You <laughs> lucky boy. You lucky guy. That's mad. I missed it all, but she wouldn't have it with the second one because I weren't a boxer then. I tried to get the same stuff. Can you make it with you? <laughs> no, mate. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yes, I'm not much to do, but they're about 12. Yeah. No, mate. <laughs> it, it was crazy, mate. But, yeah, literally, they were born because I felt that well, Wayne was born, obviously. He's my only son. I've got three girls and a, and a lad. Uh, and he was born because I felt that I'd missed out on, on, on being a father, really. I got to, you know, I was trying to do what I'm doing. Obviously, they're both through, through uni. The girls have turned out fantastic, you know, great jobs now and all the rest of it. And because, obviously, they don't uh, ever hold it against me that I was never there. Because it's a very selfish sport. It's not a family sport. It's lonely a very selfish sport. Isn't it, very lonely one, yeah. isn't it, as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah very, very lonely. Yeah. And you, you know, you, you've, got to, you've got to be selfish to succeed uh, it's hard to try and around your family because you can't you know if you want to succeed at the top level you've got to be kind yeah. of ready to go anytime there could be a big come up anyway. you're always one fight away from one big fight once you get to a yeah. certain level and you've got to be able to, be able to drop all the tools down not i've got to look after my kids and do this and do that you are looking after them in terms of finances not in terms of the so i missed all that so we had the other two cut along so i thought i'm retired now we can have the other two. I knew I was coming to the end of my career, hence why Wayne was born 20 days before Eastman. I was already looking, I'm going to beat yeah. Eastman. And then I, I was quite happy to walk away from the sport after us. So yeah. that's why Wayne was kind of born around. I thought, yeah, I'm going to be a dad then. Uh, it might because obviously starting the businesses up then, this to me your own success in terms of they keep growing, starts off with one kid, then I'm training a thousand kids a week and you're thinking, oh, well, geez, no, no me. I'm in the shop all day, I'm in the gym all night, I'm not seeing my kids. So then we get back on this merry-go-round of having these children, but not. But at least I'm coming home to them every night. But, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it wasn't, that's the only thing. They get to see me, and a lot of the time they're in bed when I come back anyway. So when we had this lockdown, the last one, it's been beautiful because it brought me a lot closer to my kids. I had three months where I, started, I can't open the shop. I can't do anything. Everything's closed. I can stay yeah, at yeah. home. Uh, it was nice then when it was summer was out. I got to spend loads of time with my kids. Uh, I'd got something you might see on, on my Instagram page. Literally, where I, I actually set my mobile gym up in the back garden and I put them through boxing sessions in my back garden with the bags, and we're doing a bit of boxing. And my daughter yeah. got used to the sport, and Wayne's obviously already done a little bit already. Yeah, yeah. Work, and I was putting them through a little mini box clever session in the back garden, so that was great. We come back from the uh, lockdown and we started doing Zoom classes to schools, and I got them both involved on that because we were off school at the time. So we yeah. doing these classes. I got one's 13, one's eight, so it appealed to secondary schools and primary schools. Which has picked up me, which has picked up a load of work for me with Box Clever. Now we've come out of the lockdown. I'm actually travelling to these schools that we didn't have before to yeah, do you can see them face to face. So that's the only blessing I can see. It's been a very tough year for everyone uh, yeah. regarding the lockdown. I mean, all my businesses have been closed. It's been an absolute nightmare, as I say. Mm -hmm. uh, I, mean, I was up tonight, uh, refreshed or up today, refreshed and juiced. Like the first full week back in business, it's been beautiful to see the customers coming this week uh, and just getting back to some sort of normality. But yeah, the journey continues. Look out for me. Look out for Cronk Birmingham. Uh, yep. Yeah, the journey's uh, far from finished yet, mate. I've got a few more chances. What, what we'll do, Wayne, we'll put, all, we'll put all your links in the comments below the video and we'll post it onto YouTube, okay? We'll put all the links here for people to take into. Um, not a problem. Um, so we, we're just coming up to an hour, Wayne, so we're conscious how busy you are, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Ray, anything else from you before we bring it to a close or do you want to bring it to a no, close? No, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. It really has. Thanks for having me on the show. No worries, Wayne. But a lot of people say to me when they when they recognise me out when I'm in public and stuff, and it's like, oh, I'm sorry to be a noise and are you your kids and whatever else. But like, you know what? 
uh, it's so it, I, I live for the fans honestly I, you know what I was saying to you I was saying to you mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm record now yeah, yeah. my biggest pleasure has been watching my guys that have come into my gym and, and they've come from a troubled background or they've been naughty yeah. kids to make them international champions uh, and then obviously go through the pro game and stuff now my biggest uh, the most proudest parts of my life is for them uh, when I was topping a bill in Birmingham, everyone's there for me. I remember winning the, the world title on the MEN undercard, on the Ricky Atten undercard, and literally going out after the fight, going into the crowd, right? We've got yeah. about seven, 800 people come down from Birmingham. They're all up in the stands. I'm still got blood all over my shorts, still got my hand wraps on. I walk into the crowd. How you doing, mate? Thank you. Thanks for yeah. coming. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know yeah. you weren't only here because I said, I don't care. I appreciate you coming. All the way through the whole of my career, I'd done that. I went not out every, with the fans. Not every boxer does that, though, Wayne, do they? No, I'm, I'm, yeah, listen, yeah, it's it just, it just, I appreciate it. I used to yeah. give a money back guarantee on my tickets. So I say, come and watch me fight. If you're disappointed, I'll give you your money back. Wow. You know, I'd be more devastated about that than actually the, the, the fight. It's yeah. that, you know, the ticket. I'll probably give you your money back if you're not happy with what you've seen. I was all about the fans. I was all about, I used to have a picture of my dad in one boot and a picture of my best friend in another all the way up until the Eastman fight. After the Eastman yeah. fight, I didn't see anymore. Because uh, I was fighting for them. I was fighting for the people who come to support me. I love people. I love the fans that, that support boxing. It was all about that. And I can just continue that journey. Now. I'm still getting to continue that journey uh, and still getting to give back. And as I, I always felt that I used to get the biggest buzz out of the fans and stuff. And I really felt that was the pinnacle of it. The euphoria yeah. and was raised and, and the buzz and the smiles on people's faces. That was euphoria. It was like, wow, I'm never going to touch this again. Oh, I'm gonna to have to carry on boxing. Then you get um, your first national champion. Then you get your first thing international, yeah. and you go, "Wow, that's even bigger than what it was when I won a title." And Birmingham, Birmingham's a, fight, Birmingham's a fighting town, into fighting oh, city. Yeah. Into it, they follow, they follow. Birmingham folk are very loyal. I know there's a split when it comes to football, but a bit like Liverpool when it comes to boxing, the yeah. city comes together, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, you got. You got to remember, I was the first British champion down here for yep. twelve years. Last name that was from Birmingham was McCracken, and no one had really done nothing. So I feel like part of that nucleus. I remember Frank coming to my show when I boxed against Bendel for the English Hall, and he couldn't believe the place was packed out. He yep. actually had a negative impact on the sport when the Foster and McCracken fight happened, and there was that big crowd violence. And Frank was yeah, like, yeah. "We're not coming." Back to Birmingham. But I put that show and I started putting shows on in Birmingham on my own back and selling these shows out and proving there was a massive market for Birmingham fighters. Uh, and it's great to see, you know, the guys that have come through, Yafoy, Eggington, Frankie Gavin, Macklin, all these guys coming through after. Macklin was still a young man when we when we boxed. He was still, and I suppose in some respect, yes, it did kill me and I did want to get the thing on there. But in another way, on the flip side to that, it was nice that the title was staying in Birmingham for yeah. Bella Brummie as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Passing the torch almost like, you know. Double-edged double sword, but at least the belt staying in Brum, you know, it was that kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, to see the guys coming through now, Birmingham boxing at the minute's buzzing. You've got the Yafai brothers that are coming yeah. through. There's so much good fighters coming through, but that wasn't there. When I wanted to box in Birmingham, Frank would laugh at me and say, no chance. Why, who's there? We've got no one in Birmingham, mate. There's you and who? You and Macklin, that's it. You know, there was no one. Now there's the, the hotbed of a good talent coming through Birmingham, so I'm buzzing to see that. It was all about bringing it back to the city. I made a big gamble, even Frank Warren, to do that and going back untelevised on untelevised shows to make it work. But thankfully, I had a massive fan base because people got on with me and had a good fan base. We could sell these places out and make them worthwhile and make them, you know, so we could get get boxing back in Brum. And yeah, it'd be nice to say I've had a little small part in the resurgence and and hopefully some of these young kids that are around now had a bit of an inspiration from seeing Wayne Alcock topping cards in his own city, which is all I wanted well, to do. Well, know? the West Midlands should be very proud of you, Wayne, because I think you've done a cracking job. And look what you're putting back in the community. I've said it before, um, so keep up the good work, fella. Appreciate um, it. Nice just, just before we go, we do, we do a bit of a predictions game on a Thursday night. Yeah. The, the Williams fight tonight against Andre, I'd see it going. It's my old division as well, and it might middle way. Yeah, it is, it is, yeah. It's hard. It's a, it's a, it's a tough one. To, it's a tough one to call because Williams, had a, like myself, he's had a lot of tough fights, a lot of fights where he's been told he ain't going to win them fights. And you build that, you know. That's what I want to kind of, uh, a kind of career that I want to predict for my own fighters. In some respect, it's no good having pushovers for fight, uh, fight after fight mm -hmm. because when you fight someone who, when you hit them, they hit you back. You don't know what to do. 
And Williams has had that kind of... It'll be a, I think it'll be a tough surf for Andre, but I think he's probably got a bit too much for him, if I'm being honest. But like my old trainer used to say to me, and it's probably a true, you don't know how good a fighter is until he gets beat. Yeah. You don't know how good yeah. a fighter is until he gets beat. You don't. Uh, so I've got to go on that. I'd have to say I'd say Andre would, 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 would win the fight. Uh, Prediction-wise... I'd like to think that Liam can stay in there, mate, and, and dig out the 12 rounds and, 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 and possibly lose yeah. on points, if I'm being honest. Uh, I, I think he's got the mental grip to probably stay in there and hang around in there. He's not the sort of kid that gets stopped quite easily. Uh, yeah. I don't want it to be painful. If anything, if, if anything, I hope he's going to do the right thing. Never fear a brave boxer because they're all brave. Always fear a brave trainer. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think that, you know, if, 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 as long as he's not taking too much, I think he can... He can, he can do himself credit uh, and do the sport of British boxing credit. And I think, he's, he, you know, yeah. hopefully he'll still be there at the final bell. But I think he'll go out if I'm being honest. Uh, as I say, still question marks over him. A few will be yeah. answered there uh, to hope tonight. But, you know, let's hope from, from a boxing perspective, from a, from a neutral view, that it's a fantastic fight. Because at the minute, ever since the sport of boxing, I got into, you know, it's like your Nigel Benji, Leonard, your Haglers and stuff. Yeah. The kind of sport went into a doldrum. All the way through my career, people just want to see it banned. Never mind any, you know, anything else. They want to see the sport banned. So, at the minute, it's on a real hotbed. And, yeah. and, and these great fights are coming along and the sport keeps growing and growing. I've never seen the sport as thriving as what it is, if I'm being honest. And people wanting to take part in it, do it. And it's just, it's a beautiful time for the sport. It really is. And, uh, yeah, as I say, it's, I think... As I answer your question, I think Andre's going to win in one point, mate. <laughs> you right, got yeah. it. And that, last one, last one. I've got to ask you this yeah. one. Um, yeah. After the both middleweights, but the but the fighting is super middleweight. Billy Joe versus Canelo. Can you can you give a give a? Can you see a version of the fight where Billy Joe wins? Yeah, I can. If he, I, I, I can uh, if he keeps away from him. But I just think, to be fair, if I'm being honest, I think uh, Canelo is paying for paying the best. If I'm honest, I think you'd have, loved, you'd, have you'd have loved a piece of him, wouldn't you, Wayne? You'd have loved a piece of Canelo, wouldn't you? I would have, uh, I would, I would have, I would have loved to have bought Canelo. I never shot it from anyone as I say at Abrams when yeah, I was yeah. really on that proper thing. You know, if you want to be a champion, you got to be willing to fight everyone. Uh, and that's you know, a true, true champions mentality. I always believe anyone that's just the, the, the thing, but and I know Billy will be getting in with that mentality. Listen, Billy is a fantastic fighter, he really is. He's got to make him miss, Wayne, isn't he? He's got, he's got to make him miss. Yeah. Yeah, it's he's, going to be he's very difficult. Canelo is just so smart. He's learnt a lot, even from like the Mayweather loss and stuff. And you know, what yeah. can you bring to the table? You know, Mayweather did make it look pretty pedestrian and pretty ordinary, but he's learnt that much from that. You couldn't come back with that kind of style and make him miss that much again. Uh, he'll, he'll start again. Be he'll be be I must go and get my beef later today. That reminds me talking about um, Canelo. Yeah, I must go and get my beef. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. Sorry, Canelo, Billy Joe then. So, you're going to get, as you froze. Yeah. So, Ray, give us your prediction while we wait for Wayne to join back in. But Canelo, oh, Billy man. Joe Saunders. There you go, Wayne. Uh, can oh. you hear us, Wayne? Wayne, can you hear us? Hello? I'm just getting come back. Did you say about Canelo? Sorry. I, I just said I must go and pick my beef up later today. That was that was a bit of a poor joke, but um, oh, sorry, mate. Yeah. Sorry, mate. I no, no, no worries. Worries, but yeah, I didn't, I, the connection. I'm sorry, but uh, no I, I think that I... connection's gone again. But, there uh, we go. I've lost you again, mate. Yeah, I can hear you now. Can you hear me, Wayne? Yeah, you know. We're going to hear you now. Yeah, you're back, I think. Yeah, we're back. <clears throat> yes, you, you think Canelo wins that one in there? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree. I think I definitely got him as pound for pound the best. And um, I think defensively, um, he's yeah, right I, up I, there. I, do, I, I think the he's the best. <laughs> And to go up to lot heavy and do it at lot heavy and then come back, you know. Yeah. And look at the pedigree of the opponents he's fought. Yeah. fought that kind of caliber of opponent, and he's always found a way. Other than Mayweather, well, let's be honest. Mm. Look at Mayweather. And yeah. Mayweather, yeah. that was a bit like I was trying to get a fight with uh, Martin Murray back in the middleweights back in the day, 
when, when he's yeah, yeah. he just one prize fighter. Why do you think yeah. I asked for that fight? It was experience. The same way yeah. Mayer would have asked for Canelo back then, knowing he was just a young kid coming through, still learning the game. It's the yeah. best time. Get them quick now before they get yeah. too bloody good. And that yeah. was Mayer was magic beyond that. Was us getting now because this guy, yeah. I think he's going to yeah. yeah, he's not stupid. He's not stupid. And I think that that was that that was definitely the ploy behind it. He just had a little bit too much for Canelo on the day, but. If he fought Canelo today, it'd be a completely different story, I believe, because I think he's come on so much. Oh, no, it wouldn't happen now. You can't really look at his age yeah, and whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he's come on so much, and I love the way he does sexy, the, the little feints that he puts in there. He's just so hard to read. Just, he's just make, of, makes you miss by those little yeah. inches, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's disgusting. Uh, you know, it really is, but I, I love watching him fight. Now, I wasn't I wasn't a matter I thought he lost the first Triple G fight, if I'm being honest. So, uh, yeah. yeah. I didn't think he, yeah, won. I thought he won. I thought he won that one. Uh, 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 but then, uh, then when I watched the uh, the second one, he boxed Triple G, yeah. one of my favourite fighters. He bossed him. And I was just yeah. like, hey, wow. He's, he's like, hand down, unreal. Wayne, what, what, about, what, about, what, about, what about Callum Smith, though, Wayne? That, that was disappointing when he went out to fight um, Canelo, wasn't it? Lost him again, I think. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we lost, uh, lost connection again. Right, yeah, there we go. There we go, Wayne. Can you hear us? Man? Yeah, got you back. Yeah, so I was talking about Callum Smith. Yeah, that, um, yeah I've got you, mate. Yeah. Back. Can you hear us, Wayne? Yeah, what did you think about Callum Smith? Callum Smith when he fought Canelo? Ca Callum Smith. Yeah. Yeah. When he fought Canelo. Oh, when he fought Canelo. Yeah, again, yeah. it's one of the reasons why I'm surprised. I thought, I thought, I thought Callum was going to be the boss in that fight. He's a yeah. massive guy for the way. I just thought, hello, you bit off more than you can chew here. He's yeah, no more. Jab, poppy jab, keep him at length. Yeah, but yeah. you know, he had the height. Everything was in his advantage. The height, the size. Yeah, yeah. He, he was unreal. He just, you know, so. You know, you got to look at that. I mean, how would Billy Joe do against Callum Smith? You know, so again, that could be an interesting fight down the line, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both fought you Canelo. Know, it could be an interesting one down the line. But, but yeah, I was really, I was really, uh, I was shocked at how easy he handled Callum because uh, I really do rate Callum Smith. I think he's a great fighter. Yeah. Uh, and Canelo, you wouldn't have thought that fight when he fought Canelo that he was as good as it. But that's what he nullifies anything you do good. He just, he's just found, he finds a way yeah. to nullify. Yeah, it. yeah he's superb. It's what I always say to every fighter that I train. Look at a fighter's best attribute and you've got to take that away from them. Take that away from them and they yeah. should be ordinary. You know, yeah. we've, we've, when, I fought, when I fought Howard Eastman, Howard literally, the pl plan I got from watching him was that with Howard, he, he, could be, he could be quite lazy and he'd rely a lot on his power. So literally what Howard would do, obviously I, the plan was literally which is what we did. I triggered him so he wanted to fight. And then I used my footwork to get myself out of there, knowing damn well that he doesn't he doesn't carry on fighting. He slows right down. The hands come down a little bit and he slows. And he then looks, looks to pick his shots again. When he does that, you jump on him again. He doesn't like working at that kind of pace. He was, yeah. he was basically doing what he did to others. I've literally used Howard's tactics on himself in some yeah. respect. That's what we got from like, the training camp. That's, that's what we had to do. And again, it's like any fighter, you have to look at their best attributes. If it's someone who's a body puncher, You've got to take away that attribute away. If you if you can't do that yourself, you've got to look at other ways to get that away. But if you can take a fight as best attribute away, if it's their jab, then I have to beat you with the jab. Lawrence Murphy was six foot one, six foot two. I'm five ten, so you can imagine it. And he came in the change rooms to me after, and he was like, "Put your arms out." He said, that, "You know, his reach was like that much more." And he was like, "Edge yeah. with the jab," because I took that jab away from him, and I actually beat him with my own jab just by doubling that shot up, and. It's just finding that it's finding what they're good at and trying to take that away because every fighter's got a key, and we can say it could be the jab. For some, it could be the body shots or whatever it may be. Every fighter's got a key, and that yeah. key, like with with Abrams, to be fair, it would have worked if I had of oh, the jab good enough, but it wasn't strong enough. Carl Froch had a strong enough jab, so my plan going into that fight was to ping him every time he stepped in to make him reset. Some fighters have to reset themselves every time they get caught with something decent. If you let them get into a flow and keep marching forward and you can't break that pattern, you're in a world of trouble. They get into a flow. If you can stop that pattern, they have to kind of jump back and reset. Carl Froch was big enough, heavy enough, 
Abrams was a little bit smaller than me, so he wasn't a massive super middleweight yeah. at all. Carl had what I wanted, which was that strong jab. Boom. And when he hit him, he had to take a step back and he had to reset. And it just, it just it, it stops the flow. I'll tell you what, Wayne. The way your eyes light up when, you, when you're going through this boxing, you know... <laughs> I can listen to you all day. Honestly, I can so can I, yeah, yeah. I think it's fascinating. I really am. Um, I'm conscious of time, Wayne. You've been kind of yeah, giving us over an hour and a half, fella. Yeah, mate. No, no, we really appreciate that, that, by the way, Wayne. Thank you. 10, 15 minutes. Never do a 10, 15 minute conversation with me, mate. Yeah. Never happen. Never happen. <laughs> I mean, I'll let Ray close it out, but just for me, Wayne, like I said, I've said before, thanks for your time, fella. I really appreciate it. And when lockdown's done and dusted and thing of the past, we'll come over to the West Midlands. We'll come over. We'll pay you a visit. Yeah, and see the gym, yeah. 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 All right to see you guys. Thank you. Yeah. 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 All so, right. Do you want to close it out, fella? Cheers, Wayne. Yeah, so there we have it. Uh, Wayne, Wayne, Mad Dog Elcock. Uh, thanks very much for his time. Um, so, guys, that's that's it from us. Don't forget to uh, like, comment, and subscribe on the channel. And uh, we'll see you guys on Thursday. See you later. And um, we'll put all the links in the bottom regarding Wayne's ventures. It'll all be in the bottom. Make yeah, sure you follow away. Cheers. Cheers, I'm waiting. Take care, fella. I'll be in touch.